I'm going to change out the fill on this. So I'm going to add an animation that's going to take place on the surface, which is dark gray. So we can swap this area out, and we can have like an anime playing in here. I could have like some sort of glitched out effect, or I could have fire playing in here. And so the, the area, which is again dark gray, will become like a TV screen or like a, a movie screen. So what I'm going to do now is let's go find the footage that we're going to use to um, swap this out. So I've got this open here. So this is YouTube. I've got Glitch TV Static Overlay 4K Copy. No copyright. Royalty free. Um, it actually looks pretty cool. This will make my fill pop a lot more. Um, right now it's just this static like dark gray image. Um, this will be um, kind of like popping and alive. And I think it will like, it'll just make it look a lot better. So this is what my fill is going to look like on the letters. And I can pick any section out on this. Things that we've got to think about would be this movie that we're about to get needs to be under 10 MB, 10 megabytes. So this is going to have to probably come down in size. So let's download this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm just going to copy the link up here. I'm copying it, Control C on a PC. And I'm going to this 4K uh, video downloader, but you can Google it. Just Google download YouTube video. YouTube video downloader, um, and we're bringing it as MP4, um, and I just put that in the search. Um, this is one of the ways to do it. So all I do is I just copy this link, and I'm going to paste it here. I just click on the paste button; it finds it. I'm going to bring it out at the top resolution, 1080p. Go to download. So I've already got this. So um, then what I'm going to do is we're going to go to Blender. So let's go back over to Blender. In Blender, let's make a new scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this footage. I've already got the footage, so we can work with it. So I'm going to go like this. I'll go to File, New, and let's make a video editing scene. Don't save. It's complete. Let's change the scene up real quick. So I'm going to change it to the compositor. So I'm just modes, and I want the compositor. I'm going to change this to the timeline. All right, so let's set our scene up. Um, I'm going to turn Use Nodes on. Let's see what's going on. Click off once because they're both selected. I just want this one. This should be the render layers. And delete that. Now what we're going to do is let's make a new one. We're basically going to make a node which allows us to load video. Add, and I'm going to go to Input, and Video Clip, Movie Clip, which is what we just downloaded. Um, there. Let's add the clip. So I'm going to go to Open. and. Again, I've already downloaded it, so and you can see it's big. It's 213 MB. This needs to come down to um, 10 megabytes, so significant reduction is going to have to take place on this footage. So what I'm going to do is we've got the clip loaded, um, but we can't see anything. I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit, and we can see we've got outgoing and incoming connections. Um, this has an image um, outgoing connection, and if I left click drag on it, I can drag it into the incoming connection on this composite node. This is what's going to be rendered. When you hit the render button, this is what happens. And the thing is we want to see what's going to happen, so we actually have to create another node. I'll do that now. I'll go to add, and I'm going to go to output, and let's make a viewer. This is going to allow us to see what we're doing. Put that underneath here, and let's drag this image to image, so pretty simple, image to image, image to image. At this point, we should be able to see what's happening, but we don't see anything going on behind it, and we need to turn on this backdrop. So turn the backdrop, and there we are. So we're looking at it. I can hit V on the keyboard to zoom out. Um, the middle mouse wheel does not work on this. And then Alt V to zoom in. All right, so let's advance the play. Let's see if anything's happening in here. You can see, yes, it is. Um, we have to increase the range. Right now, it's going to 250. Um, and it looks like we're still looking at the advertisements. We're just beginning to look at the beginning of the animation. Um, so it looks like it doesn't really start until 2.43. So I'll say starts it. Enter. And then we'll do this one. I have no idea how big this is. It's pretty large, though. So what I'm going to do is I'll make this... 600 and then we'll adjust that 
So with that being done, I'm going to go down and I'm going to grab the range slider, which is over here, which is shrunk. These two little dots, I'm going to grab one of them and pull out, which will let us see the range. This is the area in question. That's it. highlighted the darked out, dark out areas. Could be footage, but it's not going to be rendered. I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Just bring it in. Let's see what we have. You have to give it a second to update. Okay, so this is probably more than enough. This is like quite a bit. Um, so I'll go with this for now. Let's just let's not get too greedy. Um, I'll take about you know a little under 200 frames. And um, and uh, somewhere around here looks cool. All right, let's see what the beginning looks like. So it's here, it's ending on this. It's got that kind of, and I'm going to try to patch it. So it can kind of loop. I'm looking for sort of a similar color palette. I had it before. Here. I'll go with this. So 242 or 421. So 421 um, will be the ending frame. So come back over here to 600. Let's make that 421. So it's going to render between here and here. Um, we, we have to trim this down again just due to size. And let's see how it all works out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the render settings. This is basically set to go. I can come over here and hit render, um, render animation. And it's going to go with the current settings. So we should look at the settings. Let's come over here. And um, you've got the top setting, which is uh, the key, um, film type. But uh, over here is what we're really looking at, we're looking at the, the resolution. This has to come down a little bit. Um, the thing is, this is going to be displayed on a smartphone. And if you actually know the aspect ratio on a smartphone, I mean, most phones don't do more than like five or 600 pixels across. And this is like 1080p YX. Um, it's pretty big in the Y. Like, so this is going to 19. It's almost like 2,000 pixels across. This could come down quite a bit. Um, we could have something that's as big, but either one, it would have to be displayed on something which is really big. So I'm like seeing it from a distance and you're seeing this massive texture map. Um, it could probably be done another way. Um, so let's do this. Um, let's change this down. So I'm going to go 1024 and I'll make this 576. And hit enter when I'm done. All right, so this is going to be the output. We don't see anything change here. Um, you're actually, this is just going to be the render. I come down, and the next thing I'm looking at, this is really important. This is going to be the frames per second, and this has a huge effect on our file size. It's doing 24 frames a second. Um, I'm not exactly playing like you know a high resolution movie, so I'm going to chop this thing down quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to take this down to about let's try eight frames a second and see what it looks like. So I've got it down to eight frames a second. This is like, it could get a little choppy. So the, the look could actually be a little bit, um, I don't know, it could, we could start dropping frames that could be important. So we have to be kind of careful. Let's look at an output of it, see what it looks like. All right, so when this is done, I'm gonna come down and bring out to output. This is really important because this is telling us where it's gonna go. We need to know where it's gonna be rendered. I'll put it on the desktop. And we'll call it glitch. And now we come down here. Um, right now it's doing a frame sequence. This is what I'm going to do in the end when I when I make the final render. But right now what I want to do is I want to look at a little movie of it rendering. Um, I'm going to watch the playback of this. So I've changed it to the MPEG format over here. FF MPEG. I think it's an MKV file. I'm going to click on that. Um, this one is huge. The AVIs are like large. Um, with this being done, I'm going down to encoding. So in the other versions and old tutorials, I think this was out. You have to kind of open it up. I'm coming down, and what I would look at would be H.264 would be great. Medium quality. So if you want something high quality, this is where I'm sort of setting it right now. It's medium. Let's go with medium for now and see what it looks like. Um, I'm going... Down, down, down. There's 
I can set it to MP4 here. Um, so I do MPEG4. This should bring this, the file size down dramatically, so the compression on this should be like really strong. Um, with that being done, I'm going to render it. So it's going to the desktop. You know what it's being called. I'm going to file, render animation. Let's see what it looks like. I'm just doing this as a preview so I can see what it's going to what it's going to look like when we play it on the model. The thing is to get the model to play up to set up to play is going to take a little bit of time. So it would really for me it would make more sense to just do a preview here. Um, let's go. This is the one that we've made. So first thing I would do is we go here it's with properties it's tiny. Um, it's under a meg, which is great. Um, let's, let's see what it looks like. It does look a little low res. You're seeing sort of the medium quality, but I actually kind of like it. Um, I like this section where there's more movement. It's a little slow, but some areas. All right, so let's go with this. We're going to work with this as the texture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the frame sequence. I just wanted to check it out and see how it looked. I think it looks okay. Um, so now what I'll do is I will go to back over here real quick. So over here in the settings, I'm going and I'm going to change it from, from the MPEG-4. I'm going back up to... And I'm going to go into the MPEG-4. And we're going to change it to PNG. And this is going to give us a PNG sequence at this point. Um, it's going to spit them out on the desktop. And there's like lots of frames at this point. So we should probably change where it's going. Um, I'm going to put into... And that should do it. At this point, um, just look at the file size, the, the general resolution, and then the look at the, the frames per second. It's going to have a huge effect on the output um, and the codec, those three things together. Um, we have to get it under 10 MB or it won't load. So that's the whole reason we're doing all this. Um, I'm going to make the movies. Let's go render, render animation. All right, so it should be done. So now we need to import the model so we can get the texture set up to animate. All right, so I'm going to go to File, Import, I'll go to FBX, and here the letters are. I'll import this. I'm going to go into a top view. Um, shift, middle mouse click. I'm just going to drag it down a little bit. Uh, let's open up the space here. I'm going to rearrange the workspace. So I'm going up to the top corner until I see the little plus. There's like this little crosshairs that come up right now. If we look, they disappear. They appear when I come to the corner. They're not appearing right here. With them appearing on the corner, I left click and I drag down. And we can see I create a new window. It's just a little tricky doing this sometimes. And what we're going to do is in the top window here, let's change this. So let's come over here. And I think this is general scene and our 3D viewport. Let's change this to the UV editor. So this is the UV editor. Um, so what we can do with the UV editor right now is we can load and, and see different materials that are applied to the models in our scene. And I can currently we don't see anything. Um, but if I come over to this little um, box here, it's going to allow us to navigate to different uh, files associated with the textures associated with this model. And we can see we have a number of them right here. So we've got this PNG. So it looks like it's probably clear. Um, and then we've got this texture map right here, so we can see these here. The thing that we need is we need that um, glitch uh, texture that we rendered uh, in Blender. So what I'm going to do is we need to create a new material with that texture on it. I'm going to come across here. I'm going to go over to the Materials tab. Um, keep in mind, I need to have this selected. So with this selected, here's the Materials tab down here. Uh, I come up, so if this is invisible, middle mouse will go up to this section. We can see we have a few materials here. Um, what I'm going to do is 
I can actually take the one. All right, so I'm looking at the model and I'm going through the materials and I'm looking for this aqua colored or light blue um, color going through my material section of the object selected going through and I just don't see anything that actually kind of matches up with this aqua color. It would be sort of, you would think I would see the same color here in the materials. Um, it's actually this one right here, so I had to kind of go through it for a sec. Um, so I come to this one, just here's how I'm testing it. I hit the minus key, which will remove it. You can see it's just subtracted it from the model. So I'm going to go control Z, we'll put it back. I've got the material. What I'm going to do is I come down to this one called base color, and this is it's actually mapping a PNG here. I'm imagining it's possibly a transparent PNG, is what it looked like to me. Um, what I can do is I'm going to click on this little button next to it, and this is going to allow us to change that texture map. So I'm going to click on that one, and I'm going to go to texture map, or not uh, image texture, image texture. And then it's going to open up this little folder, which is going to allow me to navigate to the file. So I'm going to click on that. And desktop. here's the file where we generated the glitch effect. So I'm going to go down, and I'm looking for one. I'm going to probably place the, the general UVs in the bottom corner. So I'm looking with uh, an image that has stuff happening in the bottom part of it. That one looks good. I open it. All right, so this is assigned to the model right now. If we go back you can actually see it on the model so we have it actually working um, the issue is we want to actually adjust how these line up with the model I don't think it looks too bad right now but what we can do is we can change um, like wallpaper we can move this around inside of the fill so what I'm going to do is we come over to the top section here in the UV editor in the UV editor what we're going to do is I click on this little button it's going to allow us to begin to navigate to different textures and the one that we've just added has just shown up. So it wasn't there before. It's here now. There it is. And what I want to do is I want to see the actual UVs here displayed up here. Um, I don't see them. So I want to see uh, how this is aligning to this. So what I can do is uh, right now this is selected as an object or an object mode. We need to switch to um, edit mode. So I click on this, drop down, edit mode. You can hit the tab key, which will probably be faster. And I come over to the, I can do um, verts, edges, or faces. I'll go with faces. Um, I have the selection tool on, and I'm going to just do a sweeping selection across everything. And we can see that UVs come up. They're showing up here. Yeah, so they're coming up. So I select everything. And what I can now do is we come in here a little bit. I can start to reorient. So, to select the UVs, um, I'm down here in the workspace. I've got this in edit mode right now. Um, if we don't see the selection coming up, I might have to do edit object and then back into edit again. So it just sort of shift back and forth and that can bring it back up again if it's showing you an issue like that. But what I'm going to do right now is I've got the selection tool active. I'm going to select the object like so, and we can see the UVs which have been mapped to this texture are showing up, which are the, the fill section. Um, so I come over here and to move around in this space, you have to use the hotkeys. Like you can see, I go to the move tool. It's active down here. Control Z, but nothing's happening up here. Um, so what I have to do actually up here is we have to select again. So even though that this is, has been selected, we can see it's active. Um, I have to bring up the selection tool, I go up to the UV section, the UV editor, sweeping selection over the UVs, now we see they're active. Again, I've got the move tool on, we still see we don't get the move tool handles, I have to use the hotkeys. Um, G on the keyboard for moves is the grab tool. I'm able to move it like this, control Z, put it back. Um, select it again. Next would be S is for scale, so scale is going universally. This is great if you just want to make it bigger, but if I want to change the proportions, um, what I need to do is hold X on the keyboard, and that will allow me to scale in the horizontal. Um, I can hold Y on the keyboard in the vertical, and then I can hold Z, which will actually scale into our space. Um, this is flat, so uh, the UV editor only has um, two dimensions, so we don't have the, the third. So um, we just really have to worry about X and Y.
R on the keyboard is giving us rotation. So we want to rotate or something like that. Again, and the purpose of this would be looking down in the workspace below, just seeing how um, the texture, the image, is lining up um, with the model. So that would be the purpose of doing this and getting it the way you want it. At this point, we can save this out. So I'll go uh, object mode. With it selected, just, um, I don't even have to be selected, but I can go to export, and let's bring it out as FBX. And at this point, um, we'll open it up in Snapchat, and we'll have this animation playing back on the model. So now we're going to apply the animated texture to the fill on the model. So I'm going to bring the model in. I've got a uh, general scene open inside of Snapchat. Um, in the resources panel, I'm going to drag this new uh, FBX file that we created some time ago into their scene. I'm just going to load it. Now, um, let's bring this into the scene. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to grab the model and drag it up into the hierarchy. So let's bring it into the object section. Um, with this selected, it's facing in the wrong direction. This is our preview. I'm going to select it, which actually brings up the text. Select it. It, in the properties panel, I'm going to come over into the rotation in X, and let's make that 90. Um, again, I'm going to move over to workspace, press W on the keyboard, and let's just move this back a little bit. So I'm looking at the preview. Somewhere around here, it looks all right. All right, so it's generally oriented. Now what I want to do is let's swap out the texture um, so that we can see the animation. So I'm coming over here to the resources. I'm going down to this little plus under the resources, and I want to find one called 2D animation from files. I might have to scroll through it a little bit, but it's right about here. Now we have to navigate until we can find those files that we rendered from Blender. So I come over here. This is the folder. First frame is 300, and we have to select these manually. It's not going to do an image sequence. So I come to the end, and I hold Shift, and I select them all. Keep in mind I can hit, hold Control and unselect them. So this can be really useful if you want to start weeding stuff out. Um, and I can also hold control and add them. Let's go open and wait for it. This is going to take a second. Menu comes up. Use the full resolution. We set the resolution in Blender so this stuff was done before. I'm going to go OK. And give it a second. It's going to show up over here in a sec. Our animation is here. So now what we need to do is we can see the animation playing. Um, I've got it selected in the properties. And currently it's playing at 301 frames a second. Let's see what it looks like at 10 frames a second. So a lot different. I like 300, so let's turn it back up. 400. All right, so we'll see how this plays back. It might be a little fast for the phone. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm coming over to the model. I'm actually going to see it in, under the resources. So I'm coming under the resources for the model. I'm going to go down to the folder called materials. So let's open up the materials. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the material and look at it here in the inspector. Um, the first material is not the one we're looking for. The second material is the one. This is the one that I mapped inside of Blender. Um, and we can see the third material is red and this is the white. So this is the one that we want. And we need to change this to the animation. So I'm going to swap these two out. What I need to do is, um, in the properties with the correct material selected, I need to come over here to the base texture and open it up. Um, right now it's navigating to a uh, single image. I'm going to select it, and you can see it's giving me all the files associated with this project, so things that have been dragged into the resources that will be seen as possibilities um, for a texture will pop up here. And one of those is going to be the animation. There it is. Select it. I go OK and you see it works, like it's going. So this would be success, we're really close. The problem is right now, this is just gonna stick on the, the front of the phone. This is what the phone's view will look like. It's gonna look like a sticker, basically stuck to the front of the phone. So we need to create tracking for this object so that it will um, stay in place in the real world. So to do that, I'm coming over to the objects panel. I'm gonna click on the plus. And I'm going to go down to, I'm going to actually search. I'm going to go, we could be under helper scripts, but we're looking for the world. And you see helper scripts comes up. Object controller, we want the world object controller. So I'm going to select that. Give it a second. 
it's gonna load on top of our scene there okay so the panda's up um, I open it and here's the red panda it says replace me so this is their FBX we want to replace our FBX with theirs I select the red panda and I delete it red panda's gone let's take the letters that we've created and drop them in here underneath the world object controller Next, um, I'm going to fast forward you through this. Uh, if we're doing this right now, basically what needs to happen is this is going to be the area of sensitivity um, where the user can touch and drag the object around. So if I take my finger and I drag it around, I can actually reposition it in front of me in the space here. Um, let me just see if it goes back. So I bring it back in here a little bit. So look what happens if I, I'm actually just taking the mouse and I'm clicking on it and I'm dragging it. And this is what it will be like on the phone with your finger. I can reposition it and you can kind of move around. And it would just save you so much time. You can get a better shot kind of doing something like this. Um, the problem is it's it's not going to stick to the ground. It's going to move around like this. Um, the other thing is it's actually the area that we're going to click on is over here. It's in front of the camera. We have to move it up to the same place as the object. So um, what I'm going to do is this. Here's the object, the model. This is the touch collisions and um, the ground plane detection. So I'm grabbing three of these. I select the top one, shift select the bottom one, all three of these selected, and I'm dragging it directly underneath the model. So let me spin around here, alt, left click. Let's get it back just a little bit more. That. All right, so that should work. Next, um, it's still, what's going to happen at this point is um, I'll be able to do this on my phone, like this, but the problem is it won't stick to the ground. If I move the phone, it's going to stay right here. So if I move the phone from side to side, it's going to stay at the same place on my phone. I want this to stay in the room at the same place, not move with the phone. So what we have to do is set up device tracking. So to do that, this is the final part. I'm coming over to the camera. I select the camera, and I'm going to go underneath to the bottom add component. So add a component and I want to come up to the top and I'm just going to start typing DB and you get device tracking right here. I'm going to click on device tracking. This is again for the camera and at this point it now should work. Um, so this should be operational. I'm going to send it to my phone. I'm going to take it outside and we'll take a look.